Hey, it's Midnight Raven, and today is day 15 of the 100k Sands Charity Walk. As you can see, I'm not walking today. It is way, way too hot to be walking. Apparently, temperatures are meant to soar today. Um, I have already walked into town. I've been to Costa and had a quick bite to eat, but that is about it for the walking today. Um... I don't know, I I thought I would give an update to you. I've currently wor walked, worked, walked about 36 miles out of 62, which leaves me around 25 miles left. Today is obviously the 15th, and I have until the 30th of June to complete my task. So I am effectively halfway as of today. Um, today I have already walked um, 3,000 steps, which isn't bad, um, which in um, distance is 1.3 miles. And I have to walk 1.7, I think I worked out, each day now to catch up because I've had little bumps in the road. Um, backstory would be that when I first started the walk, I was really into it, I was really going for it. The first couple of days then I did a live stream and got really depressed because no one came no one donated and I was feeling in all honesty really shitty um I continued to do videos pulled my socks up started getting donations continued to walk and then tragedy stuck my Fitbit broke so I had to get a new one which <laughs> In all honesty, is an expenditure I didn't want to have to make. Um, smack bang, sort of like second week of the month. Um, you know, you pay your bills and everything. And I didn't expect to have my Fitbit just die. Like after a week of walking, it just kind of went, nope, you've walked too much. And uh. So I had what you call the line of death. And it was a Fitbit charge. And now I have a Fitbit Alter. It doesn't have the heart rate monitor in it, which is a shame because I actually kind of liked keeping track of that. Um, but I got from CEX. It is secondhand. I, I couldn't afford a brand new one. But it does your miles, um, your steps, how many calories you've burned, and how many active minutes you've been doing. So I went to town and I walked for like 23 minutes. It's about 12 minutes there and back. Um, Aside from that, once I've fixed my Fitbit, I've been trying to get back in the swing of things. I had like two days off where I couldn't do anything. So my walk got behind quite considerably. I lost maybe five or six miles over the couple of days. And it put me in a bit of a slump, mind you. Um, hopefully, um, I'm out of my slump now i have had more donations currently i believe we're on 47 um my original do donation target was 50 pounds we hit 47 i think or 37 it's one or the other i think it's 47 um that we've hit so i put my donation thing up to 100 um because i do have some other donations when I finish, that will put me nearly at 100 by the time I finish, um, hopefully. Um, so I upped my donation goal. Um, and I think my donations are currently on £47, which for me is, is amazing. Um, I can't confirm that because obviously donations come in um, and I don't see them all the time. But I think we're on 47 So I put it up. And decided that I'd put my donation total up to 100. Because I do have two or three donations for when I finish. Um, and they will come in. And then hopefully I will be close to 100 as possible. Hopefully you guys in the chat watching this can help. If you want to donate to the Sands charity. You can donate by Facebook pay. Links in the description. Or you can donate to PayPal if you're not happy with donating through Facebook and I can make a donation on your behalf. And then you can check the fundraising page for the thank you. Um, SANS is a infant and stillborn and neonatal death research charity. 
they help bereaved parents, they research infant deaths, they give you a memory box, they have a booklet on bereavement, they have an entire sport net, a support network including helplines, forums, therapists and people that can help. So if you um, know anyone that has had a stillborn child or a child die of infant death or SIDS, um, this is a charity that could be useful to them. They're also conducting research into why um, cot death happens, why babies die in utero and researching the problems so that we can alleviate um, these issues so that more mums have a chance of having a baby. But obviously um, places like this don't get a lot of government funding so the more donations they can get from people like us the better. Um, and you can start the walk yourself. You only have to walk 100k, which is 62 miles throughout the whole of June. Um, to be fair, you could probably walk it any month and still donate. But I'm doing it for June because it's actually my birthday month as well. My birthday is actually um, on the 26th. It's coming up. And I thought it would be a great month to do it because it wouldn't be so hot. But apparently the world begs to differ because <laughs> it is boiling out there. Um, but yeah, I've done around 36 miles so far, so I'm getting there. Um, I don't have any plans yet for massive walks, but I am going to Norwich on the 21st of um, June to go celebrate my birthday with my son, who's currently house-sitting for my sister. And we're going to go out to dinner and have a nice trip. So I'll be walking around Norwich. So I'm sure that will get me some some um, walkage. Um, but yeah, so I went into town and I went to the Tapping House Hospice Charity, which I absolutely love. And I got a great big bag of stuff because their top section is now open. Originally, it was just the bottom, but their first floor has now opened. And it is amazing. They have put so much work into that top half. I, I, I cannot tell you how much work has gone into it. So if you haven't been to the Tapping House Hospice Charity Shop in Swaffham and you live near me, go check out their new top section. It is amazing. So I got three items, I believe. And I'm going to show you what I bought. So the first item I bought was this. Um... And I bought a cushion. It's got little beach huts on it. There were actually two of them, but one of them had a slight mark. I don't know whether to go back and get it and see if I can, like, get the mark out. Because having these two would be kind of nice on a couch. So what I might do tomorrow is walk back down and see if they've got the other one. Um, but all they are are just these rectangular cushions. You've got the four little beach huts. You've got little clouds you've got little birds it's this kind of i want to say it's hessian fabric and then on the back it's just a blue color which works really well in my front room because it's kind of a teal gray color and i actually have a beach hut calendar on my wall would you believe um if i could get a cushion like this that had vw camper vans on it now that would be kind of cool because i live behind a camper van workshop place that fixes them like mechanics but yeah I thought this was kind of cool and the best thing of all it was just one pound and it's actually not that bad it does need a bit of a clean over um and a little bit of love and care but I think for a pound I think it's kind of cute um so that's the first item <sighs> okay the second item I got is for me to play with my son when he comes over. Um, I have my Litland two days a week sometimes. And this is the What Came First Pick a Side You Bet. So it's for ages 10 plus for two to eight players. And you got here. And it says the oldest wins. So sandwiches or the usa mayo or ketchup scotland or england reckon you know which one came first then it's time to put them your money where your mouth is the more you wager the more you win and the faster you move around the track but get it wrong and you'll be heading backwards in a hurry so basically the idea is to pick which comes first so on here 
did the bikini or the surfboard come first? And you have to bet which one you think came first. Which is kind of cool. So feeling lucky, gamble on the winning big. Um, place your chips on the correct side to win and move round the board. And the idea is obviously to get to the finish line, I guess, with the most amount of money. But I think that's kind of cool. I can play that with my youngest. He's 13 and this says 10 plus and it's literally just a guessing game. Um, so hopefully he'll enjoy that. It's something a bit different because I don't know. He's not really into like long winded games, but I thought something like this, I'll just show you, wouldn't be quite as long winded. Although his favorite game is actually Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. A kid that likes Monopoly is a very rare thing. Um, his favourite game would be Monopoly. He'd love sitting playing there for hours on end. Um, but when it comes to a game that he doesn't understand, he doesn't like to spend too long like thinking on it. But you get your little instructions, which, in all honesty, are kind of self-explanatory. You get a little board. And then you get your cards for which came first. And then on the back it tells you the answers. Um, you get your little chips. So you got your little chips, time tokens. Um, you got ones um, like this. So... I'm hoping it's all there. It's it's a bit hard to check in a charity shop, but um, I'm assuming the game would be all there. Obviously, we'll go through it and check. But basically, the, the premise is, is, is that um, you look at this one and it says Japanese yen or US dollars, which one came first? And then on the back, it tells you the answer, which is the US dollar. And that's basically it. And you bet on the idea of um, which one came first. So they have loads of different ones like what came first, the Green Party or the Liberals? Um, what came first, John Smith or Guinness? What came first, um, Everton FC or Liverpool FC? So it's, it's plenty of subjects. And then you get all your coins and, and everything. So hopefully I will check and make sure they're all there before he comes over so that we can play. Um, and that was uh, two pounds because the sticker was for gift aid. So that was just two quid, which I think was a bargain. Um, and hopefully the game is all there. Obviously, I, I will check. And then I got this, the identifications guide for British birds. So my son loves like bird watching and so do I. I think it could be really serene. Um, and this is a British bird book and it just tells you all about the individual birds in the UK. So you've got a glossary of terms. It tells you all about the birds and all their body parts and stuff. And then moving on through, you get a glossary of all the birds. So it tells you all about the little birdie, gives you a picture. It tells you about their features, their secondary features, their locations, their habits. And then it's got some nice coloured pictures throughout. Obviously, my favourite bird would be <laughs> the raven. Um, if they had one in here, let's see. Let's have a look and see if there's a raven in here. Because raven is a British bird. Um, raven, here we go. 300... They should have a raven in here because obviously ravens are the best birds. I mean, not that I'm being like picky or anything. 378. Okay. 378. And here we have the raven. So the raver is a lesser common species. You don't get 
a lot of ravens around but there is the raven and it is as it says up here a less common species which is a shame because i love the raven i think it's a cute majestic bird some people don't believe so because it's like symbolized with death and stuff like that um and that was just 50p and obviously it's got all different kinds of birds and it's all bright and colorful and then the last item i got was from iceland and it's just some drink to keep me going so that was everything from the tapping house hospice well if i can show it to you tapping house hospice charity shop um their upper section is really good now it's all been painted it's colorful it's well organized i think it's amazing what they've done so two thumbs up to mandy and simon who are the two managers of the store i think you've done an amazing job um i used to work there many many years ago like maybe five six years ago and i worked there as a volunteer i even did my nvq there and my diploma back in the day so it's a charity shop close to my heart and the staff are lovely um but yeah if you want to support the sands charity as well you can go to the sands website um they have loads of information there or like i said if you want to support the tapping house hospice go to their local charity shops um they have some really cool stuff so you know i got the game the book and the cushion for three pounds fifty that's not a bad price um is it not a bad price so if you want to like subscribe and give me a big thumbs up that would be amazing um if you want to donate go to my facebook fundraiser page go through facebook pay or you can go through paypal and i can donate on your behalf if you want to see more from me, remember, big thumbs up. Comment down below the question of the day. What keeps you motivated? What drives you? What pushes you to carry on in adversity? And I will see you all tomorrow for another day of the Sands 100k Challenge. Like, subscribe. Bye.